All righty, I'm going to call the meeting to order, everybody. It's uh, just about five o'clock on my iPhone. Uh, welcome our guests who are the audience. Um, and we're going to approve the minutes of July 9th, which was our regular meeting, and July 11th, which was the emergency meeting following the flood. Was everybody here at both those meetings? Yeah. Okay. Randy was at. Okay. And I, I was not. It's... Oh, Randy, are you on the phone? Great. Okay. We've got Randy on the phone here. Um, okay. Were you at either one, Randy? No. Right. I was not. Okay, so let's let's move them together. Is there a motion to, well, first of all, is there any discussion about the minutes for July 9th or July 11th? I'll we'll move both sets of minutes, Peter. Okay, is there a second? We'll okay, second. Zara seconds. Peter moves and Zara seconds. All those in favor of approving the minutes of the July 9th and July 11th meeting, say aye. 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 Randy did not vote because he wasn't here. Okay, and then we have our agenda, which is um, right here. Um, I just would suggest that we, um, that Paul Zabritsky is here about the issue related to roads and that we allow him to make a public comment during the highway section rather than wait till the end. Right, and I have an amendment from Cheryl. Okay, Cheryl, yeah. She, she would like to know what, how the board feels about $1.5 million, $3 million line of credit. So that, that's she asking with any intention that. Okay, I didn't quite hear you, but that. She'd like to know if one, if she wants the board to chime in on whether they want a $1.5 million line of credit or. Okay, a $1.5 million line of credit or a $3 million. So we're going to add that to the agenda as well under other business. Um, and, uh, is there anything else? Did, did anyone have correspondence that they want to share, um, at some point, um, under other business with, with folks they've been working with? Okay. And uh, I did, I did Liz, just to let you know that Beth Holzman reached out to me to discuss the South Bear Swamp, uh, uh, driveway uh, uh approval and i met with her last sunday so yeah yeah and paul is here right now in person um randy so he'll have an opportunity to talk as well and yeah and vic was as well so we can talk about that so um okay and um so is there a motion to approve the agenda for today well, so I also just gave uh, like a whole list of people to Sarah. So she has all of my correspondence. It's all printed out. Okay. So. Okay. So what was the question? Uh, is there a motion to approve the meeting minutes? I will today? motion to approve the meeting. Okay. Zara moves. Is there a second? Vic seconds. All those in aye. favor of approving today's minutes say aye. 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 Okay. Um, alrighty, so unfortunately, all of you guests have to go downstairs for our executive session to discuss the appointment per 1 VSA statute 313A3. Okay. Um, to discuss the appointment or employment of an employee, um, this session is limited to discussion about applicants for the vacant road crew position. All final decisions will be made in open meeting. Action possible afterwards. Is there a motion to move into executive session? I make a motion to move into executive session. Okay. Sessions. Zara makes a motion. Is there a second? Cool. Uh, we are including Eric. I would assume. I mean, that's just yes. on my part. Yes, yes. We are including Eric. Sarah, would you like to be a part of this? Only because that helps me, Jess. I don't care. I just want to want to Yes. Yeah. Does anyone mind if Sarah is involved as well? Okay. So. Sarah, Eric, some people with me. Um, yeah. And Randy is on. I haven't seen Randy. So who made the motion? I did. Zara. Okay. Randy, There's what is the 7820 number? <clears throat> is it R G D I phone? Yeah, yeah, that's Randy. R D G I phone. Yep. Okay, I think we're I think we're good. What do you think? Yep. I think so too. And then um, Vic has seconded that we move to executive session. All those in favor of moving into executive session, say aye. 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 Okay. Okay, aye. okay it's 526, and we're reopening our regularly scheduled special meeting at, at 526. Um, and uh, is there... Does someone want to make a motion 
to what we just talked about. I'll make a motion, Peter. Okay, and what is that motion? The motion, the motion is, is Ron, not Ron A. Bear. What is it? No, we're not. No, we're not giving names. So the motion is. Right. <laughs> I, I, I'll make. Yeah. Okay. Ready. Uh, I'll make a motion to uh, uh, give Eric the approval to uh, make an offer uh, for employment to the selected individual suggested by the panel. Um, with uh, the latitude that we've talked about in our executive session uh, for compensation, uh, anything outside of that would come back to the uh, board for reconsideration. Okay, is there a second? A second vote. Okay, Vic seconds that motion. Um, all those in favor of said motion, say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Great. Okay, so it is now 527 and we are at the Highway Department update um, discussion of the July 10th, 2024 flood impacts on town roads and moving forward with reconstruction, clarification of driveway and road connection repairs, and then an update from Steve on the FEMA 2023 projects. And then we will open it up to Paul Zabritsky, who is here as a public uh, resident to comment about um, a situation in his neighborhood related to the roads and um, and rainwater. So Eric, if you wanna give us a discussion of um, the flood impacts on town roads and how we're doing on reconstruction. So as it stands right now, everything is passable. We're working on making everything two lanes and shoring up some bank sites that are falling into the brook, mainly on brook roads. Um, there is uh, one culvert that is scheduled to be re replaced with next Monday on Center Road, so that that could be two lanes again. Um, there was some trees removed today from the side banks on the brook side, uh, which was pulling the, the side of the road into the brook even more. On Brook Road? Yep. Brook Road, uh, Old Brook, and there was two on center, I think, that were falling into that. Um, so that's where we stand with that. Um, when you say we, who do you mean? Uh, Dirtech's been doing the majority of that. Okay. Um, we have been doing what we can. Jay is on vacation this week, which had been scheduled since December. Yeah. So Rick has been jumping with, helping with me and hauling for Dirtech as well. Keep their their stuff going. Okay. Should, should we include that you use DJ tree removal? Yeah, DJ tree removal is the one. Oh, yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, can I ask a question regarding this work? Um, when do we know that? And Randy and I, um, I think, share the same sentiment. When do we know that we're moving from emergency repair to repair? And we need to actually contract out the work in a bidding I process. Think that's probably going to be within the next week. Okay. Um, basically, anything that's safety issue right now, we're trying to address. Passage, two lanes. Like there's just a lot of spots on Brook Road right now. It's your one car and then it drops right off. Um, so basically, stabilizing okay. those banks. Is one two lane considered safety and one lane is not? Safe. I would say yes. Okay. Yes. Even tree removals would be considered. Well, that, that was safety. that was pulling the banks down into the brook. Okay. Which is causing us to lose the road even more. You can see where it's actually separating from the road. Once that's done, they're going to go back to working on contracted work from last year's work. Any other updates on um, uh, this flood? So we were supposed to get the mower last week. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. um, I postponed that. Okay. Uh, because it didn't make any sense to rent a piece of equipment we can't even hardly use. Yeah. Um, they had time in August and September. Okay. Um, once I know more what we're looking like, I can reschedule that. For roadside mowing? Yeah, correct. We haven't roadside mode yet this year, have we? Okay.
Any questions from the board about the July 10th, um, 2024 uh, reconstruction? Yes, yes sir. Not a question, but just to add, we they are meeting with FEMA twice a week now. Uh, FEMA is looking at some personal uh, places, some people who are tomorrow, yeah. right? Isn't that for this 2024 flood? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Tomorrow, right? And then they plan to do Keith, right? Coupon and FEMA. Well, he has sent out an email about. He's I think done. he's going with them. Is he? I think so. I think that was his intent. Is he? Was he? On, he was on Plainfield today, and I know he's with them tomorrow. Plainfield? Uh, or with FEMA? He, oh, with FEMA. Yeah, I think he's yeah. coming here. Yeah, so. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I understood that he was going out with them. And yeah. we provided him with a list of people. Yes. And the visit. And I sent an email to him. I, I didn't look to see if it got back in or not. When they're going to start looking at uh, infrastructure for towns and stuff like that to see about that damage to Okay. No, August 1st. Right. Okay. Did he say that, or did he? We're we're looking for where we're shooting for the thirtieth or the first. Uh, but again, that's if we did the piece of paper he needed correctly, and his boxes are okay. With no, you're talking about last year's flood. I was talking about for this year's flood. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah we haven't gotten to last year's flood. Don't yet. they need to declare? Uh, they do, but I think I think they're going to do site inspections. As we're going to start that first, even before the declaration. See you. That's what it seems like. They're doing. They're doing them already. Oh, two. 2023 is messed up now. So there's an okay, so not 24 is no. Well, I, I, I got an email to find out when the next one happened for 24. I thought the 2024 was tomorrow. Do you know, Brian? Sorry. The, why is Keith going out with FEMA tomorrow? For 2024 flood or 2023 yes. flood? Yes. Well, yes. Yeah. 24. Yeah. But for personal property. Oh, for what personal property. What we're talking about is then a site visit to. <laughs> okay. For the road. There, yeah, there's this. We've got gotcha. too many things going on here. Yeah. So the 24, I asked when they're going to do site inspections or visits to see for damage for towns. For roads, yeah. For municipalities. Yeah. Okay. I have not been an answer. We don't know that yet. Gotcha. Okay. So for 2024, um, FEMA site visit for roads not yet scheduled. Right. But for some reason, FEMA is coming tomorrow to do individual. Yeah. Keith will be with FEMA tomorrow afternoon. To look at individual properties. And our FEMA rep is also asking okay. the state when they're going to start getting information compiled. So they can declare or not declare or whatever. Okay. So that has a, yeah, there's a couple of things here. As well. Okay. It hasn't been declared, so we really don't know. Right. Now, this 2024 stuff, we do emergency stuff like we did last yeah. year. Yep. We can use dirt tech, but then we have to contract it out. Then you have to, after we have to contract it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll have to go through the same process as last year. That bid with the, with the procurement policy. Yes. If it's FEMA, which it should be public assistance well, approved, I hope. Well, uh, you raise your hand or do you want me to say? Yes, go ahead. Steve. Well, there's there's some overlap there. And in talking with FEMA mm -hmm. today, and you can correct me if no, I'm no. wrong, Eric, but um, I was very concerned about this overlap yeah. stuff. You know, there's going to be some ditching and, and some of the final road gravel that we're going to be doing under the contract for 23 flood. Yeah. And there's some additional, some same stuff. So how do you handle that? And what Dirk was saying today was that we should proceed with our contractor and just go ahead and do those ditches. And, and we're going to end up uh, with more on their contract than what they have. So we would have to process that as a change order to the contract that we have existing if the erosion was increased over yeah. and above the 2023 flooding? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Okay. Well, it keeps it simple. No, I know. A lot of senses because if, yeah. you, if you do put it out for the bid, for contract, you have to have somebody that's going to quantify that and, and uh, scope of work. But we do have roads that will have to be paid out, like Macy Road, um, Wood Road. That stuff was all 100% complete, and now it's not anymore. Can, can, can we keep, do we keep speed, or do we have to have new speed? We don't know 
if why don't we wait till we find out if we're going to get FEMA money? That's what I think we do. We wait till we find out if we're going to get FEMA money before we start thinking about that. Is there, do you have a declaration? No. no. Yeah. We, yes. If there's a if there's a declaration, I mean, I would imagine there's going to be a public um, so. assistance declaration. How else are we going to pay these millions of dollars? Brian, how are we going to do it? <laughs> okay, base sale sounds good. All right. Uh, he says that hopefully the presidential climate does not the declaration. Okay, that sounds hopeful. Um, okay, so and that's just for public assistance, or we don't know. Uh, I'm not sure. About we don't know. Okay, so I also just want to say in regard to this most recent flooding, um, I started organizing the August sixth meeting. That's a select board meeting, but it's going to be focused on roads. The meeting will start at five for us to just do our things that we need to do as a board. And then at six, I mean, anyone can come at five, but it's not very interesting. At six will be the road conversation. And I've invited, um, I've invited Ruben McMartin <laughs> from your team. He's coming. He is representing Central Mount Regional Planning Commission as a senior transportation planner. I've invited Stacy Pomeroy. She's confirmed she's a river scientist. Um, and then I've invited um, I've invited um, who's the third person? Uh, Todd Eaton from Local Roads. So we have three experts who sort of have their niche to be able to talk about i've asked them to sort of think about and there's stacy to come back with me to me with a couple of sort of questions that i need to probably talk with you about um eric um so understand a little bit of the landscape but i've asked them to sort of speak briefly about the current and future situation of the roads and rivers and then open it up to questions from the public because i really think the public needs to be heard and just have someone to talk to and ask questions to. And I'm certainly not qualified as a volunteer board member to answer questions on roads. And I just think that there's a lot of sort of, you know, armchair road engineers and river engineers out there. And I think it'd just be really great to have some people who have expertise to be able to address some of the things that people are asking of all of us, right? So I invite everybody to attend. I hope the whole board can make it. Um, Mike Klein, who's also a retired river scientist, he's coming as well. So he, I think, will be helpful. He lives here in Middlesex. Yes. That's what I was going to say. You were going to ask, yeah, Mike Klein. So he's, I think Stacy Pomeroy is sort of the, the new Mike Klein, is my guess. Yes, Victor. What about, what about, uh, Jaron? Moore? Julie Moore. I think Julie Moore is on vacation that week. Uh -huh. um, yes, Peter Hood. Is there going to be a remote option for that meeting or no? Yes, be a remote option. Yep. Um, the other thing that Julie mentioned, I just want to throw this out there. Julie texted me today to say that on August 7th, um, well, let me just read the text. The administration is planning a capital for a day on August 7th in Washington County. Owning that I will be on vacation this week, so she's not going to be around. I wanted to put out the offer for us to hold some sort of discussion forum on roads at Town Hall as a part of the day's agenda. It would be during business hours, but if you think there'd be interest, we can work to schedule something that would involve A&R and V-Trans. Or no, B-trans, and she says us and B-trans. So maybe she means middle sex and B-trans. So I said, well, we're actually doing it Tuesday night at six o'clock. Maybe it could be the kickoff to their tour of Washington County. And she's not responded. Um, so um, I don't know if we do, like if, if she's never responds or she does respond, you know, maybe the same people would be willing to come the next day to town hall to be with the administration as well to answer some questions. I'm not sure. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to put that out there. Sarah, uh, not Sarah, Susan Clark is going to be the moderator. 
Sarah's already reserved the school for this. This has moved very quickly, um, but I think we have a really good lineup. I think it's going to be helpful for people to have, um, it's going to be a meeting. So like people from out of Middlesex could come, but they would have to be given permission to speak or ask questions because this technically is a Middlesex meeting. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there that this is happening. I hope you all can be there for the six and invite all your friends for this opportunity to be able to ask questions. And I've also put it out on front porch forum that if people want to ask questions in advance, we can sort of queue up the conversation with some questions. Okay. Okay, so moving next to, if we don't have any more questions about the July 10th, 2024 flood, are there any more questions about the flood of 2024? No? Okay, so um, clarific uh, sorry. clarification of driveway, road, and connection repairs. That's sort of related to the 2024. Um, who wants to talk about the clarification of the driveway repairs? Because it has come up. How come the town's repairing this person's driveway and not paying for my repair and all of that? Does, is there somebody who wants to speak to that? I mean, I can, I, I can start because I've been a big mouth out there okay. saying what, who's going to do what and what is happening. Um, so in working with Steve and Eric, um, obviously we wanted to get the roads passable. Um, and then we wanted to get people so that emergency vehicles could get, get in and out. Um, so people can get in and out and go to work to, uh, get food, um, that sort of thing. So I know that in the, that the, the policy of the town is that, uh, all driveway culverts are um, owned by the homeowners, um, that you did an emergency declaration or policy change in 2023 so that we could fix homeowners, help homeowners get them out. We're using the same policy in 2024. I will say in talking with FEMA, hopefully that's okay. We would have been better off had we had the policy that driveway culverts were owned by the town. In, in FEMA's vision. So hopefully the fact that you guys changed the policy last year will work. I don't remember changing a policy, policy, to be perfectly honest. We did. In, in the meeting. We have a written it. policy yeah. about culverts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it was under the declaration of but, that. It was in the meeting minutes that they said that the town would be taking care of driveway culverts as long as they were in the right of way. That was right of way. Okay. Did that only pertain to that event? How was that written? I don't know if I have it. It was something, uh, Eric, you handed to... Uh, wait, 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 wait. I think I might have to. No, I've got it right here. Last year. Okay. State of Vermont Executive Department. We're looking at the State of Vermont Executive Department Addendum 1 to amend to amended and restated Executive Order number 0323. Okay. Uh, I think it's three quarters away down the page. What is this? This isn't our thing. This is something from this. This is a state oh. thing. What is it? That not what you handed to him, the FEMA guy? I don't know. This isn't about a driveways. I thought I gave him the minutes. So typically, and I believe this is actually one of Stacy's questions is about culverts, like who owns culverts. Right. And uh, oh Paul has a question. Paul, would you like to speak? Do you know more about this than we do? Uh not not really historically. Driveway culverts have been homeowner owned, at least historically. As far as this goes, I don't really know. I just wanted to bring one thing up for for Steve and Eric. Um, and it's more just like a heads up. The majority of culverts that I've seen being reinstalled, I recognize the emergency aspect. Um, the problem is they're not being put in the way that a uh, new curb cut uh, would would be approved as and when i say that there's there's not proper approach from the road to the driveway itself and the reason why our our uh, driveway permits are designed the way they are is to mitigate runoff coming down people's driveways 
and into the road. And in addition to that, if a culvert were to ever get blocked, they are specifically designed so that when sticks and things like that um, are in the front of the culvert, the driveway will actually let go rather than eroding the road. It will, it will actually cut parallel across with the culvert. Um, so I just wanted to give a heads up. I haven't been around town, but everything I've seen basically from Steve's farm to my house, I'm just, this is more of like a proactive comment. Those culverts will at some point, some of them only have like three or four inches of cover over them. Like I said, I recognize the emergency aspect, but those culverts will be the first ones to fail, right. it, you know, when, whenever it happens. I just want that to be on everyone's radar that that should definitely be something that in in the distant future is is addressed to avoid issues. And I think, Paul, a good example is my driveway. Last year, we hired someone to do a quick fix. And then the town redid it, right? Because it wasn't to spec. It was to, to, so that we could get over. And they put in a larger 24-inch culvert or something. I don't know the inches, but it was not. It was bigger than the one that we had in there. And we had no problem with this flood because it was done properly. Um, but right. it wouldn't... It, would have had we just kept the what what was there that we had fixed. And so here is what Sarah has brought that says, and this is all coming back to me. It's like I have PSTD or something. <laughs> Liz, this is last year, <laughs> spoke to Vermont League of Cities and Towns regarding the town's duty to repair the junctions between tri private driveways and town roads. She noted the town's highway ordinance states the homeowner owns and is responsible for culvert beneath a private driveway. In normal circumstances, that's true. However, because these culverts are in the town's right of way, she said it would be wise for the board to hire a contractor to repair the connections and have those bundled in the town's FEMA request. She said the argument is to prefer to have these culverts installed correctly, not just willy nilly, thereby creating more problems in the future. Peter said the most pressing matter is to get people connected safely to town roads. Okay, so um, Eric, so here's something interesting. Sandy asked about installing bigger culverts to handle increased water. Eric said the minimum is now 15 inches. I think they've increased it to 18 now. And now they've increased it to 18 as of this flood? Uh, or as of like a- Before this flood. Before, before this yeah, flood, yeah. okay. So anyone who's doing a private driveway installation should have an 18-inch culvert. That is minimum. fairly recent. Okay. So that, that changed. And anyone else who didn't have that is grandfathered in or is yeah. in the town's best interest to well, perhaps repair, replace those. But that's another conversation. That's another conversation. Yeah. Um, okay. So... Um, All this is, is this is about this last year. This doesn't change fundamentally anything. It's just related to last year's storm that we so were doing this. It's just, for, it's for FEMA. Um, it was for FEMA. Yeah, yeah, we had to give them that for so that they'll actually cover the cost of, of the repairs from last year and this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Had we... As a town, consider those culverts, you know, in our culvert system, a holistic yeah. part of the way that we need to make water go, then it wouldn't have been a, a, any sort of issue. With being okay. So, does anyone know? Do other towns have own the culverts, some the driving do, culverts? Some, some do, some don't. Okay. Yes. You need to get a copy of the highway ordinance that was passed in 2003 or you're good. Because I printed it out downstairs. Um, it might be handy to have it. I mean, I don't want to make you run and get it, but um, so and I think here's the thing that this is this is an example, this latest flood and yet yesterday's flood is an example of why potentially we make changes to what we have currently, right? And maybe we we do make it that the town is responsible for Culverts, but we can't make that decision tonight. Um, but that might be something that we put on the agenda to talk about. But maybe we talk about it after we have this August 6th meeting as well, because then we can get some better clarity about that as well. Yes, Peter. So for me, 
the the difference here and what we're talking about is if and I realize you know the emergency isn't declared yet and all that, but the bottom line is I expect it will be. Um, if it's a situation where we can get FEMA reimbursement for the cost, right? So it's a declared emergency. FEMA is going to come in. If we take responsibility for the driveway culverts, we're going to get reimbursed for 80% or whatever the percentage turns out to be with state participation. That to me is one thing. And I think we should definitely be doing that. It would be a mistake not to do it. On the other hand, um, if we say we take over responsibility for all driveway culverts in town, no matter what, we're taking on a, a significant burden which is not going to be reimbursed and is going to increase our cost of operation so i just think we have to be careful how we do this and uh that's about it i would argue that we could be actually reducing our costs by taking over the culverts because they're installed properly and they're the right size and they that and we have control over the water flow as opposed to so-and-so's little culvert that doesn't, or no culvert at all for that matter. Yes. And I would say well, in the future. All I, would, all I would say, Liz, is we have to, and we have been trying to, I know, pay attention when somebody gets a driveway permit and they install a culvert and they do it incorrectly, we make them correct it. Yeah. All right, sorry. We, so we go out and inspect it. And if they don't do it according to our... Uh, according to the specs in our highway ordinance. No. Yeah. Pass Thank you. Well, Zara, so, and that's, that's exactly why I, I do agree with you. And it's, it's going to be a townwide discussion and a lot of conversation, but if we're making sure that the culverts are the right size, that they go downhill, downhill, and you can't have a 24 inch culvert feeding into an 18 inch culvert or a 15 inch culvert as it goes down the hill. Um, so there's a lot of things to, to think about, uh, Peter and Liz. I think, you know, I need to, we need to start looking for money, ways to work with the state. I would assume that the state's going to figure this out, that most small towns are going to need. Yeah, we're not the only challenges. Challenges. So problem. as we go, we'll look for money and yeah, have the right things to do. Randy, did you have a comment? Just echo what Peter had to say, you know, it's up to us as we're looking at installing new driveways to specify the need for um uh, a different size culvert if that's what is at hand you know the the standard that goes with the application is a minimum standard mm -hmm. it doesn't say that we can't require a larger culvert because we've got a thousand foot of hill coming off from the high side of the road that has no other culvert getting the, the water to the low side yeah. ahead of that so you're picking up all of that surface area um you know, it's a minimum standard. And and I think when folks are putting in new driveways, I think that that responsibility, the cost of, of doing so uh, should remain on them. And um, if down the road, the town found that it was in its best interest to uh, upsize something, then, you know, uh, that's on us. It's a, it's a different situation if we feel like we we should do something later, but, uh, when people are doing new new installs, yeah. Uh, so um, we can either move on to talk about the 2023 FEMA projects with Steve, or we can address Paul, which is sort of related to. I think before you go on, do you guys make any decisions about whether or not you're going to cover driveway connections or not? Anything for the minutes? I might have missed my one. No, we have not made no. Okay. We did not make any decision. Um, I think we just wanted to clarify that um, that we were making repairs to people as needed in an in order in an emergency that we were not going to we didn't actually say this, but I think we expressed in emails that we're not going to reimburse people for any money they spent on their own driveway repair that if we get a FEMA individual assistance declaration, they can attempt to get reimbursed from FEMA for that, like they might have in the past. And yes, Scott, you have a question or comment. 
Uh, yeah, I just want to bring something up. I remember uh, Dorinda saying something just just to give the boards uh, the inform this information to you guys. Um, you took out a line of credit, and I guess the in interest wasn't going to be covered by FEMA. And I was going through because we had significant damage here in Moortown, where I live, and they took out money from Northfield Savings Bank for three million like you at a four point some interest rate. And Callie said the interest would be reimbursed by FEMA. So I don't know if they did something different or why they would get reimbursed. Thank you, Scott. There is, um, there is a new sort of thing that they, it's a little bit complicated, but they are reimbursing interest on loans. Technically it's like up to I forget some funny date, like the day the disaster was. I don't know. There's something that makes it seem like I'm not going to get any money back, but they're 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 able. They're they're going to be working with us. Sarah, you probably know more about this, but our FEMA rep is going to be working with us to embed the interest clock back into our reimbursement. So thank you, Scott, for bringing that up because that is relatively a new development in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, you're um, welcome. I just, I just, I, I just saw that, and I said, "Huh." I remember you saying her saying it wasn't going to be paid for, so I figured I'd bring it up. <laughs> that's great. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. So, what do you guys think? Should we talk talk about Paul's situation right now, and then we do mine, Steve, and then we move on no, to your I, FEMA? Okay. So, Paul, do you want to talk about your situation? Thank you, Paul Christie, one three three South Ferris Swamp Road. Um, my Paul, do you want to come a little closer, maybe, and sit at the table so we can hear your, um... Okay. That'd be helpful. I've that Wilson was here several weeks ago, uh, raising a concern about a driveway permit that was, uh, being approved. And the next day, uh, we talked it with Eric, and I think we came to a really good conclusion around, uh, upsizing that culvert a little bit and recognizing that uh, there are four culverts upstream of that culvert across the road. Three of them are not functioning presently, and the fourth one, the highest up one, was overrun in the last storm. So the volume of flow that came down on July 10, I was out looking at it, was far more than was going to pass through that 18-inch culvert that uh, was approved. Um, last week, while we were away, that was installed. And the location that it's been installed and the fact that the other culverts above it are not functioning, they're all higher than the bottom of the ditch, um, leaves my house in, in peril. And, and I realized that many people in Middlesex have had real harm in the storm and I'm confronting an imminent harm situation, but I want to make it clear that uh, the, the work to do the culverts under South Bear Swamp Road uh, is required to remove that threat. And uh, I, I, we have a sense of urgency about it. I deeply appreciate that Randy came up and had a look and Vic and I had a conversation and, uh, we talked with Eric about it um, as well. So I, I respect that it's on everybody's radar. There's hard priorities, uh, but the town should know that if this culvert that was just installed fails, the water comes through our garage and living room. It's, it is the, the, hand, the house is situated immediately across the road and below it. Uh, in a way that it would do enormous damage, catastrophic damage. Does this sound like something for an emergency watershed protection uh, or not? It might be. It might they be. They criteria. Mm -hmm. I don't see us, but it might be something that could apply to that. They typically don't run um, transportation related projects. So that could be the, the limitation. Yeah. I see. Is it more like riverbed type projects? Even like structural stabilization, but yeah. Uh, it could be hazard mitigation. It could be hazard mitigation. We have some funding that we're adding projects to call for hazard mitigation. And I think this is a project that we should add um, to that. If, because it sounds like, and could you just, and I'll let you think, because I just want to get a point of clarity. The culverts that are above, when you say they're not functioning, what does that mean? They're damaged 
I mean, they're, the ends are in bent and they're, the ditch is deeper than they are. They're just the water ditch is deeper than they are. Meaning it, that. Because if they can't catch water. Yeah. The, the bottom of the pipe is here, the ditch is down here. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So until that fills the bottom of the pipe, you can't catch anything. But even oh, when, I see. There's when, just, the water never gets up to it. Even when the water hits it, the yeah. ends of them are damaged to a point okay. where they're, they're nowhere near probably even 20% of a clear open. Is it possible, Eric, that one culvert repair, even one, could potentially mitigate what Paul's referring to? It certainly couldn't hurt. So it sounds like there's three yeah. or four. I mean, certainly if we could put one right prior to that driveway, it would make a big difference. Talking to cross pipe, right? Yes. Okay. Right. Those cross pipes, there's 14. Yes. So there are. There are scheduled to be oh. done. Okay. okay. When are they scheduled? For FEMA 2023? Yes. yes. Well, maybe this is our blessing in disguise. Well, this is exactly. Uh, this is what Paul needs to know. Paul wants it done tomorrow. Well, yeah, that's that's the problem. Well, yeah. don't know when do you know? Happen. Do you know or do you know when they're going to do it? Nope. No. But it's scheduled for this year. Yes. Yes. It is. Okay. There's, there's 14 culverts scheduled to be done on South, South Bear Slump Road. Don't let me speak for you, but I, what I heard is Paul's concern is that what if it rains tomorrow, tomorrow about maybe tomorrow. Well, yes. it could rain tomorrow and also wash out riches, right? I mean, that's the reality, I, right? I understand. Yeah. Yes, Randy. Um, so a couple of things. Um, uh, I'm curious to know in our last uh, meeting that I attended, I missed the last one, but the one before that. We had approved the permit for that access uh, contingent on your recommendations. Has the culvert that's been installed in that driveway doesn't meet the specifications of the permit that was approved? No, they, they, they actually, I talked to them, I think it was last week, and he said it's not staying like this. We're just trying to. He told me they were going to be fixing it. They were just trying to get into the woods. This is the new culvert. Correct. On the forest driveway? Yes. Okay. So that was what I was told by them without even asking them. I just drove up to them and they came up and said, this is not the way it's staying. But it rained have, pretty hard last night. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, we're having another flood. Well, and I have concerns about the intention of such. They say that, but if I'm a contractor, I'm not installing, uh, I'm not going to purchase a culvert that is improperly sized based off your recommendation, putting that in and then doing all of that work, going to go upsize it and go buy it, purchase another culvert. Maybe he's got one laying around and it was quick. I just throw in as I told him. So that, that's one piece. Um, the other piece to, to just follow up with what Victor had to say. I'm wondering if, if I don't know enough about the dirt tech uh, remaining work and schedule. If there's a chance to have some communication with their tech to say, is there a way to shift the schedule that doesn't screw them up with how they're deployed and what everything works there to maybe pull this up towards the front of what their remaining work is? I don't know enough about it. No, I think that I think that can be done um, when they get done this emergency work. I mean. It's, they're right, straight out right now, and they will be for whatever another week. And then they're going to be working on each pill to finish that, but they have more than one approval. So um, I can talk with Dan, and I'm sure that he will accommodate that okay. in their schedule. They they they're pretty amenable to changing their schedule around. It seems like they've been doing good by us with all very much mm -hmm. stuff that's been going on. I figured that they would be open to the conversation at the very least. Yes. And also, Peter yeah. did tell us we can we can rob Peter to pay Paul in some of these projects. Like, do what we need to do, what we know we need to do. It's okay. Um, so, I, I want to go back to their culverts. Mm -hmm. What is in there right now? 15 inch? I think so. Yeah, that's what it looks like okay. to me. I didn't take a tape out and measure it, but it looked. Okay. And I think uh, 
And I didn't measure it either, but just looking at it. What was your recommendation? 18, I believe. 18, yeah. which is the required minimum. Is there a reason for us to say, have you already, when we already have them move it and never like, have you signed this? I have not. Because I'm wondering if this is not done yet. Right. So I'm wondering if we should consider a 24 inch culvert. I'm just thinking. I don't know if the ditch would accommodate. You don't, oh, okay. You mean the whole ditch on both I sides? Think I think to have enough cover to get up in there and have your your back set and all that, I, I think a 24 inch would work. I think it's imperative that we slow down the water. We get it across the road. We let, right now, everything from Daniel's Farm Road to the brook at the at the hollow is being captured from the high side of the road and run down South Bear Swamp Road to the brook. On yeah, the high side. On the high side of the road. And it's overwhelming everything along the way. We need to get that water under the road, out into the meadows, and let the wetlands do their thing, right? The low side of the road has been filtering that water for millennia, and it's not now. And, okay. and we need to return it to that state. So I appreciate the recommendation, but I, I think the urgency is to get I those think, culverts okay. crossing the road. Okay, we'll gotcha. stall. Okay. Um, Just to be clear, uh, you said 14 culverts were on the schedule for the uh, contracts. Yes. yes. I imagine and that those four or five culverts that we're talking about they here are, are on that list. They are absolutely on that list. Okay, that's good news. Okay. So, um, do you have any sense? Are we talking a month, weeks? That if they were, if in the best case scenario they were able to switch their schedule, do you have any sense of that, Steve? If they change their schedule around and they get done this emergency work from this storm, mm -hmm. they probably could have a crew on that road fairly soon. Fairly soon. So within two weeks. Mm -hmm. And I want to make it clear that this is about this. This is about trying to save another person's home, right? This isn't like, oh, you know, if you come to a meeting, we're going to do this for you. This is really we're trying to mitigate future disasters because we already have a, a number of disasters related to people's homes right now. I'm just fixing cross culverts that are already on the list to be fixed. Yes. We knew we're bad. We're moving. We yeah. to be done. In order to protect someone's bad time. Yes. To can. reiterate the original plan, uh, here's the reason that they're not doing South Crater Small Court or you know, wouldn't have been doing it if we hadn't had the 11 2024 flood, was because we wanted to finish. The bus routes. Mm -hmm. Remember, we gotcha. had the no. bus routes. Yep. That's why the East Bill. Right. There. So now, hopefully, they have enough crews so it won't rob. So that's it won't, won't rob that uh, bus route feeder to pay that South Bear Swamp to fall. Yep, exactly. Oh, that's out of the equation. <laughs> <laughs> no fun intended. <laughs> okay. Do you have any other questions, Paul Christie? No, thank you very okay. much. Okay. Um, all right, so now we're going to move on to Steve and just the update from. I think you just had. We it. just did it, right? Okay, and um, <laughs> we're going to be hopefully switching to South Bear Swamp, and um, we'll give you a schedule to students call okay. up and get their work to schedule it. But part of that comes right in for what they were saying. Yeah. And I'd like to publicly acknowledge um, Zara and Sarah for their, Zara in particular, for your road announcements every day, <laughs> twice a day sometimes, mm -hmm. and how helpful that is. I think that the public is really happy to be able to just get a sense of when the roads can be closed. And so thank you for communicating all of you road people with Zara and Sarah um, so that we can get uh, the word uh, out. Yes, Victor. I hate, be, I hate to throw a oh, wrench on. into this, but uh, I'll get to like this. Yeah, shit. you'll like throwing wrench up. Yes, I'll throw that wrench up. Okay, I don't know where it comes from. Who gives Zara and, and uh, Sarah their information? Because I'm getting a lot of complaints. Well, what the hell is going on? They said, oh, hello, can be close. It's not close. Center Road's closed, it's not closed. And then she comes on at 10 o'clock at night and says, oh, it's not going to be closed. Well, 
We know that because yeah. it's 10 o'clock at night. So yeah. how do we work better? I'm not criticizing no, either one of you. Yeah. How do we work better so we can get the correct information from you, you, and... Yes, Zara has an idea. I will tell you that. Okay. First of all, get on Middlesex Family if you want it now, 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 or but next You can't door. ask people to do that. I mean, front porch forum is one thing, but, you know, not everybody gets on it. So front porch forum, unfortunately, they... Um, you know, I can write them at 10 o'clock in the morning and they post at 5 o'clock at night. Right. So if you want the information right now, unfortunately, Vic, you're going to have to get on Facebook Families or Next Door, which is another app. You can't have it at 5 o'clock at night for the next day? They it's post at random they publish. times. Yeah, they, it's yeah, they, yeah, they post. Yeah. But, but shouldn't you be able to? Doesn't their tech? Well, don't they know what they're going to do tomorrow? So they, well, what, what she's talking about, Vic, is the delay between a communication to Front Porch Forum oh, and when that. they decide to publish. That's the that's a piece of this. That's correct. Uh, one of the things we have also kicked around in terms of communication that the state is recommending now is the use of Waze, mm -hmm. the app Waze, yes, where if you are on the road, you can say, hey, this road is one lane or there's a police person there or whatever is going on the road, but it is GPS enabled. So that's not something I can do. I'm not driving around all the different roads. That's something our, our road crew will have to kind of get used to doing. Well, and then, the right. And then the citizens can all use that Waze app and find out what's going on at any given moment. So that's, that's going to be us welcoming ourselves to the 21st century. <laughs> yes, Steve. Um. I'm the young person. I'm the one that feeds Zara most of the information. This is what I get to. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, circumstances change. That's just like the uh, center road uh, closing. And it had twice so what we did that I said, why don't we just put it off until another week and then plan on that? So some of those road closures will be. Happening, you know, like like center road, like we're going to have to close out right off. But what we had been doing, and even on uh, East Hill, is they put um, they put their traffic control out there, and we try to get the word out. But they're moving right up through, changing culverts, mm -hmm. and they might do two or three a day. Then the roads close. You know, you can get out that way, or you can get out this way. Right. So most of those roads you can get out one way or the other. And and some of these people that are coming for us, people are going to come, but some of these people are going to work at five o'clock in the morning and they're not putting their signs out till eight. So then when they come back, it's like, what the hell? Well, they have to start. Tell them to tell your friends to call Zara. Thank you. Her. Yeah. No, I think what Zara's no, really Zara's going to put a tutorial. On the front porch, <laughs> how to use waves. No, I'll well, get there. I'll get there. Okay. All right, you guys, in the interest of time, since it's yeah. 615, if we have nothing more to talk about with the roads, um, we're going to pivot to the monthly meeting with the Middlesex Volunteer Fire Department, and then we're going to move on to our guests who are here for the USDA Emergency Watershed Program. So, welcome, Fire Department, Eric, and Fire Department, um, Scott, if you're still on. Yeah, I'm here. And fire department um, chat. So we're up to 59 calls. So it's looking like we're going to be knocking on 100 this year, uh, 12 for the period. And these numbers are based on having the meeting last week, which I rushed home from my vacation to get done and found out afterwards that we weren't having a meeting last week. But this also keeps the numbers in the order. So instead of having a big one, these are all kind of line up. Uh, so 12 this period, we had one mutual aid out, two mutual aids in. Uh, max number of responders is six, min number is four, which is something to take uh, notice of. Normally it's two. And our average uh, bumped up to five per call, which is pretty pretty good. Um, engine one was at eight times, six, zero, tanker one, six times. Uh, rescue one, eight times, truck 14, none, and POVs two. So we had US two vehicle off the road. Um, nothing really spectacular about that. Um, 
The 89 accident was quite a violent accident. It was a uh, 25 foot box truck versus a small Toyota pickup. Um, the box truck ended up on the railroad. That's how we ended up having Montpelier fire because we were all up on the interstate. So they had to cover the route two. Uh, and then the, an excavator had to get in to get the box truck off the railroad. So it was quite the um, thing. DMV was there, AOT actually were there long enough that AOT could actually put out a sign package so we didn't have to spend uh, four more hours out there um, to shut down the lane. Uh, next one, we had a, um, the, we had shut down 89 southbound to help Montpelier because there was an accident, a fatal accident up in Montpelier and they wanted us to shut down the southbound lane. So we had to deal with that. And we had a, um, Colby road excavator versus power line, uh, guess who won and, um, we had 89 northbound deer versus car. Neither one did well on that one. Uh, it should have been Molly instead of Millie's simple route. Uh, structure fire. As it turns out, the state fire marshal saying it was most likely due to a um, a lightning strike. And it was a lightning strike that hit a tree and then came down, not an actual hit the house. And, uh, total loss. We had Berlin, East Montpelier, Montpelier, Moortown, Waterbury, Woodbury, and Worcester. Um, Got called back to um, yeah. same house for a rekindle, which is not uncommon when you have a total loss. It, it takes a while to get um, everything burned up. And there was a center in South Bear Swamp with a pole fire. All these were on the 6th. On the 7th, uh, we got called for smoke at Molly again. And again, that's we're not going to do anything with the smoke because it's just got to let it do its course. Uh, we had US two and center tree on power line. Macy Road was the only uh, flood related call that we had. Um, they called that uh, we got the call about um, ten after two, and um, I responded down Macy from Shady Rillside and got into the first just past the first house and. Yeah. A.M. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that uh, just past the first house, there was no road. So I went around the other way and tried to make it in. And I got down, starting down the hill. And it's like, yeah, I'm not going any further and came up. They, we, we got in contact with them by phone. The water level had dropped up. They went back to their house and they were fine. So we, even though we couldn't get to them, we kept in contact to make sure in case we were going to need to get something Thank bigger again. Uh, then we had a fire rollover on 89 um, that sounded more serious, but um, Montpelier Ambulance canceled us before we could even get to the scene. People need to slow down on 89. It's not close. Uh, they slow down everywhere. <laughs> They're driving 50 miles an hour on East Hill on the one lane area. Are dying and getting in car accidents? Um, Basqua, total of 16 for the period, 12 medical onlys. Training, we did interior search and rescue, and that was with air packs um, on repairs. It's inspection season, so we had rear brakes on engine one, and then there's a module that controls the brake lights coming on and that died. Realize that's a 2003 chassis, so things are starting to happen. Um, and there weren't very many, very many of those parts available. We finally got it. Uh, engine six, we only had to replace the marker lights. They were um, analog lights. We now have uh, LED lights in there. Uh, truck 14 had a, a brake caliber freeze up, and the rescue needs a new tailpipe. It is an 11-year-old vehicle, but it's kind of things. Now for purchases, we looked at the quotes for the various um, two different companies and two different styles of, of turnout gear from each company. We went with the least expensive. Um, our total price is 397504 which was significantly less than the 45000 I thought it might be. Um, we would like to go ahead and make that order from- Is this the ARPA money that yeah. we agreed to spend it on? Yep. Okay. You agreed to fifty thousand, and we brought it down to thirty nine seven. Okay. Does our agenda say there's action possible? Yeah. Okay. So you would like us to make a motion that we approve the purchase of this? Yep. Um, 
for now here. Yeah, this price doesn't include the shipping, but the, the okay. shipping is going to be about $100. I'll make a motion that we approve the price of uh, the new turnout here at 39705 plus shipping and handling. Is there a second? I'll second that. Randy seconds. Did you hear that, Sarah? Yep. Okay, all those in favor of approving the purchase of the turnout here for the fire department say aye. 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 Uh, using our using ARPA funds if you want to put that in the middle. Okay. Anything else for your updates? Uh that's the, oh we we are up to 14 people in the department now. Wow. And so we have awesome. somebody else who's put an application. That's in. great. So, well, thank you and thank you for your service as always. And this price reflects the 14th person. Okay, awesome. great. Good job. Yes. I will say that's quite the turnaround from where we were not too long ago. Yes. So working. Yep. It is. Oh, and a secretary. You're a secretary? Excuse me, honey. I'm just saying. Tonight should coordinate a um, coin drop with the concerts. Okay. Yeah. We we do other things. Uh, we were selling raffle tickets. Um, the end of we stopped this weekend because we're drawing tonight. Um, uh, but we, oh. we've done stuff with them. Um, first prize is a, a seven millimeter hot date rifle, second is a fishing package, the third is a uh, big champagne chocolate basket. Oh, nice, okay. Well, what would I do? They're saying we need wanted... more marketing. Yeah, you need more marketing. Marketing communication. I remember something about a raffle for a gun. So, I do remember that. Marketing the driveway um, clear outs. Yes. We, I'm for the we tickets. will do that. Did I send you the amount that we were going to okay. I'll yeah. send you that info. I $20 when is the <laughs> raffle being drawn? In, in about Three hours. 35 minutes. <laughs> Okay. I <laughs> we'll get you next time. Don't laugh. <laughs> yeah. Jeff, Jeff and I have had a conversation about um, the fire department helping people clear out their culverts, blow yeah. out their culverts. So, Jeff, what did you just say to me? I will get you the price. I don't have it off the top of my I don't want to give you the wrong price. That we're... But is that something that's okay to select board that I can announce in front porch forum that our fire uh, marshal is happy to help? With like, over clean out if you need it, and then here's the price. Or you mean like blowing out sticks and things like that? Cleaning culverts. Cleaning out. So we have a special yeah. nozzle. Oh, okay. That... And you would charge people to do that? Yeah, well, donation. Yeah. yeah, as a donation. Yeah, I think that's fine. Because it's it's probably going to be about a two hour process. So. Oh yeah. What would your suggested donation be? I I we had decided we had decided with the membership. I don't remember the exact figure. I don't want to say. Okay, so, is. but don't post anything until you know the oh, oh, Yeah, We have to complete the meeting from last week. Oh, okay. We, All right. Yeah, we got to call. Yeah, we got to in, in the middle of the meeting. Last week. Okay, yes. <laughs> We're Randy, finishing the meeting tonight. about the, the uh, address markers that we used to do. Mm -hmm. yes. still, I, I know that those went offline for a little bit through with COVID. Is that back in effect? So we, yes, we, we do have it back in effect. It was being done by the prison folks. Apparently they can't do that anymore. Um, so now we're paying commercial price and they're being made in, uh, in Berlin. Do we know what the cost of doing so? Fifteen is uh, is fifteen dollars for single sided, horizontal or vertical, red or green, two inch numbers. Which and did is you the say extra price. didn't have it say JD or is that just a one time thing? That was put on. We're not adding that on these. That was done with the uh, when the prison system was doing it. Oh, okay. Great. All right. Any other questions for the middle sex? Volunteer fire department. Yes, Randy. I have one other question just uh regarding if we've if we allocated fifty thousand dollars to the fire department for the purchase of this and we're saving you know uh ten thousand yeah. dollars roughly. Mm -hmm. Um what are the intentions with the remaining uh, I think we'll have to think about that because we have not we have not intended all the money at all yet anyway, except it's been technically spend we just have to get it back for the reimbursements. I just felt like it was we should make it clear as to whether or not that sits with the fire department. Oh no, I think so. no. We we weren't 
anticipating that. Yeah, we, no, we were fifty dollar max for the turnout gear. Yeah, and then whatever it turned out to be, that's, that's right. Right. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. I mean, we'd be happy to buy other. <laughs> <laughs> So oh. for the minutes, we're putting anything that wasn't allocated to the turnout gear back to our own funds. We'll have to, that actually should be in our other select board goals, figuring out the rest of our ARPA, because I don't think we spent it all. Well, uh, I think that we did make a decision on final reporting for that, and uh, we move forward with that. We should clear that out for Cheryl and Dorinda, but yeah. I'm fairly certain that at our previous meeting, um, we made the decision to report out uh as general expenses. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think it's yeah. Yeah. correct. We're Thank good. You. Okay, so um no any other matters for the I don't have to pay dollars on me, so next raffle I will. Oh, he's kidding me. He's loaning me twenty dollars. I may. He doesn't have it. It's got last few ones. Yeah, no. I got two dollars. Yeah, it's not right. eighteen. <laughs> I might have. It. I might have. It. Well, I'd be happy to, have to, have to, have to, have to do third tries. I know it's still. Uh, it's it's okay. I I got it. We're, you got it. Yeah, yeah, I just, yeah, yeah. I talked to them. We're good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, though. Thank you. I know you guys are big. All right. So we are moving now to. Um, we have a couple special guests to talk about the USDA Emergency Watershed Program for 2024 flood victims action possible. Um, so we have a couple of guests from Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Did you say you were also Larry from Central Vermont Regional? No. no. Conservation. You're on the Conservation Commission. And yeah, so the two of you yeah, are, um, are here from the town. And then we have Brian here from Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Um, before we talk about the 2024, I'm wondering if you could give us a recap on what's happening in the 2023. Sure. I, I was not here for the site, but maybe Larry or, or Adrian can talk on that. I went on the site visits to look at the properties that okay. had already got into the program. Yeah. And I'd say two of them were really hammered more by this event. Uh, okay. One. Let me back up for a second. We okay. sent design plans out that were done by the engineer to seven properties that had been accepted to the program okay. on. Tuesday, July 9th, or whatever, July 9th. Okay. And on Thursday morning, I got four emails or three emails saying, it's, it's not going to work anymore. So that's why we did more site visits to the places that had been damaged. The same places that we had accepted had then been re-damaged, damaged more. Okay. So Larry did the site visits. Go ahead. Okay, so more damage to all the seven properties? No. Or, okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, as you said, uh, we're uh, on Brook Road. There are a couple that the erosion advanced on one, but the I talked to the text who was with us, uh, and they at least the cross sectional design can stay the same because the elevation of the of the grassy area between the house and the river is the same. Mm -hmm. So the cross sectional designs he did with the coal, except it's going to need a longer a longer run. And then uh, I think it's 289 Brook Road. It is it's there. They lost some riprap that had been placed by them at another time. And then there's some concepts. The uh, regional engineer had been out. I mean, the um, uh, the screw operation engineer had been out. So there were some ideas that were batted around with him. And so there's going to be some, need more work and more redesign at 289. Uh, on um, Need Road, if it would fit there, if the river had been placed, it wouldn't advance so much if it's a rear access road in. But uh, the other ones were not much different. Okay. So there are changes and uh, a couple are bigger changes than what had been before. Okay. And okay. my understanding, and I, but I'm not kind of the administrative side here, but when I was out with Mike LaPointe, he said those. 2023 uh, properties could still fall under 2023 for the extra work. For the, okay, perfect. And, and they would be in the 100%. Ooh, nice. Still in the 100%. Okay, that's but right. I, I, I can't talk for CS, but I did hear that in the field. Okay, yeah. So, so, so they'll stay 
and any extra thing that has to get done will stay in this seven in this 2023 application set. Okay. That was what I heard. Okay. That's what we're we're waiting on three permits to be signed and then we can go out and the for the construction bill. Um, okay. And I just re email those people. Okay. So I, every property needs a permit. They need to sign a permit that we then will bring to you guys. Gotcha. That yeah. 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 And so for the timing of these 2023 people, um, is the hope that this is done before winter? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And we applied the when we can get the signatures from all of the yeah. landowners, the sooner we can put the job out to bid. Um, ideally, we're going to hire a single contractor. Yeah. Ideally, the town is going to hire a single contractor to, to do that work instead yeah. of parceling out the multiple folks just makes the contract no, uh, yeah. a lot easier and will hopefully More the contractors focused on all of the projects and not the budget. Yeah. Yes. Randy, yes. So in regards to that, if there's a project that is hanging the overall process up, um, uh, what is in effect to say that we're moving on without you or can they move on with that bulk of the projects and then have a one-off or is there has there even been a decision made there as to how that's going to work? I mean, at some point there's got to be a cutoff. Yeah, right? I, think, I think we can just, you, you can just set up a, a cutoff yeah. for that. And and say, I or, might even do like next week. We know they've had them since it's a while ago. Yeah, yeah. And they're only three, so I'll get back in touch with them and say we can go now or or you're just, yeah, yeah. but we really need them to do it because it's in our best interest oh, of a I, town to have it done so we don't keep losing people's properties. And, and for them, I mean, it's yeah. in their own best interest. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. As well, because the 100% coverage is not, is not typical for this program. Yeah. So there's okay. really no reason to not, you know, to not receive. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure that we're not hanging up a group of projects off of one individual uh, because. They're just not making themselves successful in the process. Nope. Okay. Yes. So thank you for that update. Um, so now we're considering the participation of the same program, but for 2024 flood victims. So Brian, do you want to speak to that? Sure. So um, I have been in communication with Michael Point. He is the uh, USDA contact for the, the state. And he's the same person that we worked with on the 2023 project. Um, we do need to wait for the federal disaster declaration and then need to submit a essentially a letter of intent um, for the 2024 round of funding. And so um, this is all the same process that you did uh, last year. Um, I can, there's a, a template for the letter. I can save Adrian and Larry the time and just uh, complete that. Um, two questions that I would have, uh, that I do have for the select board. Um, I can list myself as the technical contact. I don't know. I don't think we were involved at that stage last time around, so I'm not actually sure who and it was. Oh, Larry was listening. Um, you know, I don't want to cut uh, off anybody's joy in life. If you want to be the technical contact, um, that is totally fine. But um, uh, I'm glad to go out on the on the on the walks. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll still let you come to the back. Okay. Are you free as the technical contact, Brian? Uh, yeah, we're still working that okay. piece out at, at CBRPC. So last year we used money from the Municipal Technical yep. Assistance Program. Um, currently, we're filling our time on work in Middlesex and several of our other communities to our uh, emergency management budget. And okay. we'll just see how that, okay. how that shakes out. But, um, you know, I envision the process really just playing out the same as long as the conservation commission, we do, we do still need a local champion, someone to talk to property owners, that, that kind of thing. Um, so I can prepare that, that letter of intent. Uh, the select board would need to authorize Someone, I think Liz, uh, is the logical choice, just like last year, uh, would need Liz to allow Liz to sign that for the town. Um, so once that declaration goes in, we can submit the letter you know, uh, the following day. And that puts NRCS on the clock to actually schedule the, the site visits and to complete their uh, disaster survey response forms. So at that point, we would certainly want to know um, 
property owners that were affected in this last storm so that we can set up the site visits and they can make a determination which properties would be covered under the program and which ones would not. Gotcha. And this is, again, you're being proactive coming here with the assumption that there's going to be a declaration because we can't do the EWP without a federal Correct. disaster declaration. Correct. But my understanding based on, and I know Middlesex has impacted as well, but there are a few communities that were very significantly impacted, Plainfield yeah. uh, being one of them, you know, losing six bridges, that racks up the, the dollar loss pretty quickly. I would be very surprised if yeah. If we got to a place where FEMA said, I don't think you've hit your dollar target for gotcha. a federal a declaration. Okay. Now, can you also just clarify for our vast audience on CCTV, um, this emergency watershed protection does what kind of work? Like, what are they what are they doing? Mitigate. They're doing mitigation for rivers, riverbanks. That kind of yeah, protecting property, protecting personal property, essentially. So um, we talked about transportation projects earlier. Transportation projects do fall outside of their scope, but we're talking about things like stabilizing banks so that you can um, staunch the erosion in a place. So anywhere where there's um, property at risk. So they're not necessarily as interested or concerned about land. Generally speaking, it's more like your, your house. Yeah. It could be town projects that have roads too. The river's moving towards the road. Okay. That, that I think they, they can get involved. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Not, they don't not, want the river to like take over the road and that kind of thing, right? Did the McCullough, did the Kamal, McCullough yeah, Bridge, they were that, was, that was part of last year's effort, was it? I wasn't really involved in it. Didn't qualify. I thought that we had a natural hazard mitigation, no? Yeah. It, yeah. it is not one of the seven projects. It's not part of this. It was part okay. of something else. No. Yes, Sarah. I think they looked at it. I'm quite sure we looked at it, but it didn't qualify. Okay, Sarah. I just want to ask a question. So the property owner owns the brook. I'm thinking of like Brook Road. Right. 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 The town has a right away. Brook Road is right now getting narrower and narrower and narrower. Is that the town? Should the town be doing this, or should the property owner who literally owns the road be fine for that, even though they're on the other side of the road? Do you know what I mean? Um, it would well, the town the that owns the road, the town, the property owns the road, the town has a right way over the road, but clearly the town's interest in this is because this road is getting prepared more and more precarious. Right. But the homeowner, the homeowner themselves are actually on the other side. You mean over the river? Over the river. Yeah, I'm talking about, I'm thinking of Stevie's house. You know, right there is the road is very, very narrow. Back of Nelson's. I don't know what I mean. It's really narrow. So, but yeah, and he might not see any interest to participate in this program, even though oh, that's really the road that's going. Yeah, how did, I just wondered how that works with the community. Um, Maybe Sarah I mean, it's a riverbank on the roadway, right. essentially, that <laughs> continues to get washed out. Right, yep. making the road smaller. Yes. Right. I mean, I think we put it on the list of projects to be investigated. But and should the town be going to that homeowner and saying, hey, you should sign up for this? I I feel like the town should communicate with the, the landowner who who decides whether or not to put the project on the list for evaluation. Right. And if it doesn't matter. If there's but there's any money that needs to take place. You know, there's a, yeah, there's no commitment, there's no financial commitment to putting project sites on the potential list because the USDA will come out and make a determination of whether or not a, a particular project fits into their okay. program. So um talk with the landowner, but more importantly, make sure that that site is included on our list for the site visit. Mm -hmm. So then, I'll, I'll let you know. I think the question he's going to ask is, well, if there's a 25% match, am I paying for that at the town? Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, because of the ownership issues yeah. is what you're talking yeah. about, right? Yeah. And we were is this funding limited? Okay. Like, meaning we can only, like, even if we had 15 awesome projects, there's funding only for 10? Or not? Is that not how it works? That depends on sort of what's in their bank account and what other disasters they're dealing with. And so, in the case where we identified more projects than there is funding for, the projects that didn't quote unquote make the cut are basically in a holding pattern until either Congress reobligates funds or some money comes back from another disaster where they didn't spend as much as they had allocated for the site. 
in 2023, did we have anyone that we said this no. is a, okay? No. Everyone could either reject it or yes, there were projects that were deemed ineligible, but um, gotcha. there was plenty of money for that round. And they are covering it 100 percent. Yeah, that this time. Yeah, Which not, not the case for this. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. No. It's undetermined. Not yet. I mean, it, they advertised it at 75 percent. Yeah. which they did a year ago yeah. too. I, yeah. I remember that. That was a pleasant surprise. Yeah. yeah. So, sorry. You know, sorry. Go ahead. No, finish, finish, finish. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the one other, you know, the one other question that I have for the USDA, and I, I'm pretty sure I know the answer is no, but the worst they can say is no, but I'm still going to ask the question, can we bundle what happened this year with last year and um, glom onto that 100%? I'm pretty uh, sure the answer is no, but I'm still going to ask. Good uh, job, Brian. Thank and you. And I, I feel like once again, even if we're starting at this 75-25 split, no one has to write a check at the time of site investigation. It's not until the project is actually installed. So there's plenty of time for people to consider, I don't know what other options they would have uh, other than self-financing, but there, there is plenty of time um, to consider you know, whether or not they, they want to fully commit to the program. Okay. And really there's no full commitment without the bidding process and everything else taking place. Like they know actual cost before somebody signs up and commits to it. Until the construction bid is yes. done. Yeah. Like these people haven't committed yeah. when they sign the permit, they're saying yeah. Yeah. once the you know once the shovel hits the, the ground, um it's too late. You're on your hook. Change your mind. Yeah. 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 Sure. So two things. Um, one is if Brian is asking that question, maybe Brian could also ask them if municipalities need to if all of Brook Road is eroded, eroding, if municipalities can also, like what Sarah was asking, uh, as a municipality, should we also be asking the Emergency Water Shed Protection Controller to help us with Brook Road? Like that we are an applicant, right. kind of Middlesex as an applicant. There were two, I think there were two town projects that they looked at oh. that Eric finally, ident finally identified. It took quite a while. Oh, really? Yeah. And okay. They, they didn't end up qualifying. Were those were bridges? Were they both bridges? I think they were both. They were both bridges. Quick, because here it's who owned that one. Yeah, it's a tricky one. But I'm sure we're not alone. Right, like who owns Brook Road? All of Brook yeah. Road. Yeah. Yeah. Who is, is it the town or right. is it? Well, I mean, essentially, the town is responsible for the maintenance of that road and and the repairs of that road. So, I mean, my my knee jerk goes to the town is responsible for for that, even if the property itself is owned by the resident. Yeah, um, I get it. So, and, I, and I'm thinking like a resident might be more, um, sort of from the road, Dick, like, you know that house up below me on Colbert Hill Road um, that's on the right, it's a black amber almost by the river, and that river keeps eroding very, closer very, and closer to the house. With a big culvert in um, yeah, there's a big oh, culvert there. Yeah. So that's yes. not what yeah, should have. They should apply, right? But they would probably be responsible because it's not encroaching on our road; it's encroaching on their house. And I will post something in front porch from like yeah. last year, telling okay. people, you know, if you even think there's a remote possibility that you might qualify, it doesn't cost. Yeah, you she should apply. Otherwise, her house is going to fall into the river. Yeah. yeah. So the second thing um, was back to your, the Makoa uh, Bridge question is. I have not filled out a housing grant. That was something that was being done before I kind of jumped on board with the road committee that we had a permit to scoop out those rocks, but only on one side. So we went back to the person who gave us the permit to see if he would give us the other That's side different funding. And then the flood happened. So before we were able to utilize the permit that we had gotten, and, and like Sarah literally sent an RFP on the tent, before it started raining to to deal with McCullough yeah, Bridge. I, I needed guidance for that RFP. It's really, I looked at the other ones that are on the Department of Environmental Conservation. They're so detailed and they have so many requirements about meeting with ANR. It's like, this is way above my skill set. I needed help. But no, I need to redo that permit. Right. You know, that's not adequate. So no, I don't have a hazard grant out for that. Okay. Maybe, but maybe I think we there could. was money for that. I thought we had that Eric would know. We had won a grant for $12,000. Is that where that was going to go? The Mulcahill Bridge? That was going to go to the bottom of Government Hill Culver, Culvert, wasn't it? You want to go to ditching and put stone in it to do it. Is that a better Connected road? segment. Yeah. Right. That's better roads. That's an A&R. You know, we have That's all these different roads. Thing. The Lake Champlain. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's, 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 
the bridge that you're talking about at McCullough Hill on the on the 11th of 2024, actually the water came down through and and didn't go the way we thought it was going to. I mean, way what people most people thought it was going to go. It actually went to the, to the as it's coming downstream. It went to the left, and it, and that a lot of that stone is gone, and so uh, uh, it kind of cleaned itself out. <laughs> We just need another storm. Yeah, okay, guys, in the interest of time, because we have EIA on the phone, and um, so do we have to make a motion that we approve no, applying for it? Okay, so I would say, Brian, yes, if you, uh, you know, once we get that emergency declaration, that you go ahead and, and I help us. Fill, yeah, I can fill out the, the template, the, okay. the letter at that point, yeah. and um, have that for your next meeting. I might not. Be available for the meeting, but basically at that point, the motion will just be to authorize you to sign and allow me okay. to be the technical contact on, okay. the, on the request. And just for clarity purposes, too, for anyone listening, this work wouldn't begin before the spring, would be my guess, of 2025. Who knows? Probably not, but okay. it really depends on how many landowners we're talking about. I mean, yeah. You know, I mean, we sort of know what we're doing now. Yes. <laughs> we have no idea what we're right. doing. Well, and I think we this is a good... Here, you know, um, we could fold him in or we have to go out to bid probably again, but, um, okay. I, you know, we have the RFP. All we have to do is change the, the name of the extent that um, will work. Okay. Great. Thank you so much for coming, Brian. You You're welcome to stay for the rest of this exciting <laughs> meeting. Okay. Um, considering approving Victoria Hallahan's application to participate in the hazard mitigation program buyout for her property on 13 Ridge Road, action likely. I see the application here. Um, thank you, Sarah, for tracking her down and meeting with her. I know that was a lot of work, and you went above and beyond the call of duty of a select board member. No, I'm sorry, of, of a town uh, clerk. Um, and um, That's standard. so is there anything that you want to tell us about? With this, besides the fact that she's being entered into the bio, uh, this, 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 um, this mobile home has been crunched. It's it's uninhabitable as of okay. July tenth, twenty twenty three, and it needs to be part of the bio program. And once we do that, we can, I think we'll do it now. We can probably discontinue Ridge Road because that will be the last remaining property, and then that's it. She could probably start discontinuing Ridge Road now. She has not returned to this uh, mobile home since the July okay. tenth. So am I the sub Okay, perfect. Am I the sub grantees authorized agent? Yep, okay. So all you have to do is just offer it, just have a motion to authorize it, and then we can Okay. Is there a motion to approve Victoria Hallahan's property? Knowing that she's going to fall off the tax rolls and it will become a a place where we can never build again. Right. Okay. All those uh, is there a second? I'll second. There are seconds. All those in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Okay, am I the witness signature here or the grant? You're some the, sort you're of the grantee. The grantee. Yeah, and and right. Randy is there's the a grantor <laughs> and then there's a grantee. He's the grantor. The town is the grantee. There's a bunch of grantees. Are we all supposed to sign? Just sign one. It's a ridiculous box. Okay. <laughs> it is. Any financial uh, gosh, I can't wait to go to jail after. There's Somehow my signature is on all these things. <laughs> That's right. Any place else? I believe where I had all the little things. Okay. Then there's just two, and then there's this yes. that okay. I signed to. Okay. Uh, great. Okay. So uh, discussion of timeline <laughs> for. Uh, Okay, this is VIA. Megan, if you want to turn your camera on and you're here, that would be great. So, this, it's me. Oh, but Megan's on here. Too. I know she's on. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, great. Okay. Danny's in charge. <laughs> okay, great. The discussion of timeline for town hall renovation considering August 2023 2024 deadline to put the bond question on the November 5th, 2024 general election ballot. Possible discussion and approval of construction managers, action possible. Sandy, take it away. And and Dave, take it away. Or um, whoever. Yes. And Megan, welcome. Megan from BIA. So I'm Sandy Levine, who serves on the town hall committee together with Dave Vegeta and Liz Sharp. 
And here as well is Megan Zinfi, who's with um, VIA, the architecture firm that the town hired to help with the town hall renovation project. And I, I don't have, uh, I'm here mostly to talk about the construction manager piece of it. If you want to talk about the other, the, the timing piece of it, um, I didn't know that there was anything. I don't really think there's, it's it's just that we have, we're time sensitive in making this decision about the construction manager um, because of the work that needs to get done so that we can get a number to put on the bond. Okay. Um, so, yes. So with that, just, just by way, way of background, I'm, I'm, where, where this is ending up is uh, looking for approval from the select board for moving forward to hire a construction manager. So that's, right. that's, where I'm, that's where I'm going to end up, but just by way of background. Um, with grant funding, um, we hired VIA originally to complete a feasibility study for the town hall to compare costs of renovating versus um, building new. As a result of that process, we learned more about the building, its limitations, what, it, what what's possible. And at town meeting, in March, voters supported moving forward with design development, which includes completing the plans um, for that project, as well as hiring a construction manager to help in confirming the cost of the project so that we can come up with a better figure for, um, for a bond vote in November. What, what, is that, what would that amount be? And since June or so, when that money became available, the committee, um, the three of us have been working with VIA, um, as well as with other folks in the community to gather more information, make sure we were um, you know, responding to the comments we had about what was needed with town hall, what the staff needed from the town hall going forward and so on. Um, the energy committee um, provided input, I know Barb and Gregor here, as did um, the Historical Society and Disability Rights um, provided input as well. Um, we put out an RFP. The next step was to um, seek a construction manager. We put out an RFP for that um, to get them on board as soon as possible. And amazingly, we were very fortunate to get four really excellent proposals. Um, we were honestly concerned we would not get any. And we would have to beg, given the, the, the situation of you know construction now, it's really hard to find people to, to do work. But we had four excellent proposals. Um, they were all very close on price. They were all very qualified. The committee met and rated the four proposals. We decided to interview two, the top two of the four. And Dave and Megan and I interviewed those two top um, Top, top folks, we completed those two interviews and we have a recommendation for a selection um, to make to the select board. I don't know if we do that publicly. Do we name names? I don't know how this works. Uh, yeah, I, no, it's not executive session. No, you can say who the top two people were and who yeah. you chose, so that's fine. Okay. I mean, you can even see who all four were. No, nobody, nobody's been notified. Is that correct, Megan? Nobody's been notified. Okay. Uh, Important to be official about. No one's been no notified. No one's been notified. No four been notified. Okay, but the whole point of today's meeting is for us to approve it right. so that we can move forward. Otherwise, we have to wait two more weeks. Right. Name names. So we have to name names. <laughs> <laughs> or you could just say who you've approved yeah. if you'd rather do that. Or who you recommend. Yeah. We're going to have to. Yeah, I, I think. Um, Sorry, just to jump in a little bit. I think my understanding is that there was a prior approval for amount of funding for this phase of work. And so uh, the proposal that was received uh, falls within that amount of the approved uh, money that you've already sort of said could be uh, spent for this amount. So at this point, it's really uh, hearing the recommendation, I think, from the committee of who uh, they select work with and answering any questions um, that you have so that we could um, proceed. Yes, Randy. Uh, I sense a little hesitation about uh, publicly acknowledging names or making the recommendation. And I'm curious to understand if uh, similar to the effort that we made earlier about entering into contract with somebody 
uh, as an employee, if that warranted an executive session, I'm wondering if there's questions from you folks as to whether or not that should be done in an executive session. Uh, no, it is. It's not because it's, yeah. because it's different. You have an employee who's like, but when, for example, when we did all the FEMA projects, we listed all the bids. When, when uh, they, you know, these are professional companies, they make bids. This is all coming out of taxpayer money. This is, they will be compensated for by taxpayer money. These are not individuals who may be losing their job or maybe at risk in some other, if they don't get the job. Yeah. So I was just asking a question if that's the sense of hesitancy that I was oh, I, I'm sorry, getting. I, I wasn't recommending okay. executive session to be that's clear. <laughs> well, I mean, the other, the other thought is that if, Megan, do you think that this is unfortunate that we would announce it before you had a chance to talk to well, the no. So we get right. approval because we can't do anything on our own. Okay, yeah. But I just I wanted to, before I just said I who it is and who they were. I just want you to know we haven't okay communicated that to yeah. Most most typically how this goes is you know we go through the evaluation process like we just uh, did, and I mean there were selection criteria. Uh, that was listed in the RFP. The proposals will be made available uh, as part of public record. If anybody wants to review any of those, we can share back or address questions related to how we arrived at the top two. Um, but most typically, it's um, I understand that you've charged this committee with moving forward with this work. And so therefore, they're making a recommendation to you of like, based on all of the things that we've done to this point, our recommendation is X. And so then... Uh, really, it's looking to you to say, we agree with that, or if someone comes forward and say, we have concerns, or we have questions, or there's more due diligence that is needed. I think that's really where we're at. But at, at this point, the committee does have a recommendation of, based on their evaluation and the interviews of who to move forward with. And so um, it's in some ways administrative because it also does fall within uh, the prior approved monies. Um, so they're not sort of exceeding the budget or asking for more monies than they had previously. Okay. Yes, Dick. Yeah, I, I, in light of how long it's been time, but I, I don't, I'm kind of confused. I thought we voted for a hundred thousand dollars. Sixty-five. Sixty-five. 65. $65,000. And um, that was, when did the November, I don't really care, but when did the November 5th, I thought we were going to do it on town meeting day 2025. Uh, no. When did that change? I think we've been talking about November since the beginning. Since the beginning. had to deal with the on. On vote. You wanted, I think the board had said that that they wanted as much public input as possible, and you can't get more public input than getting it on the November 5th general election ballot. The problem is there's a technicality since all the ballots are being mailed by the Secretary of State. Right. Office. We have to get this question. We have to get the number by August 23rd. Start the bond process off after that, but the number has to be done by August 23rd. What you said is for about November 5th, that is because probably more people will be voting. Yes, you're yeah. going to have a lot more people. The November 5th general election okay. with, a presidential, with a presidential race in a real time meeting. I understand that. Okay, so the other thing is that we've got a, a vote in. Uh, we're adding money. No, so let me be clear. Approved 65000 the AAA comes in around whatever, 45000 and then the other money was to hire a construction manager at this design phase only, right? So we are approving a construction manager who will be able to help VIA come up with a price for um, for us to put on the bond. If the bond is passed, we will continue to work with that construction manager. So this construction manager that they are recommending is going to be, if it passes on November 5th, a bond, and we go to renovation, they will be our construction manager. Okay. And so there is no increase at this time? No, there's no increase. It's, it's just, Thank you. Yeah. Thank, yeah. You Thank you. Thank you for... Uh, um, yes. Um, What's that? Keep for, right. Yeah. Right. Can I call the question? <laughs> uh, yes. So can you tell us, can you give us a... Um, yeah, the recommendation is to hire EF Wall as a construction manager. 
Okay. And that was, I will just say it was based on, they came in uh, very strong. They were um, enthusiastic, eager. A number of them showed up to the, um, to the interview. They have a very good track record, including having worked with Dave when he um, managed or was in charge of state buildings at Norwich University. Um, and they have a, a lot of local contractors that they work with. Okay. Any questions for the committee who interviewed? I have a Yes. Dan, do you think that they will be able to come up with a number by August 20th? Collectively, we will come up with a number by August 20th. Good. <laughs> that is the goal. <laughs> Megan, do you have any comments or anything? No? Okay. No, I don't think so. Time is of the essence. I mean, being prepared for um a uh, bond vote to have a number for in November is really critical and I think we highly value especially in this market uh the construction expertise of a construction manager I mean there's some partnerships here related you know that we can they have strong relationships with subcontractors and um we really think that this is great value to the town Great. Thank you, Megan. And so just to clarify, Dave, maybe you can speak to this just for the folks to kind of give an update about this um, process, right? So the VIA, you know, is as they're doing their design, you know, they're going into more details, right? And then the construction manager is going to look at it and say, okay, this, you know, is going to cost X number of dollars. Um, and then they're also going to do the add-ons. Is that correct, Megan? Like they'll, they'll be looking and saying, and then the price of add-ons and an add-on, for example, is let's insulate um, these walls. That wasn't in the original thing. So we're going to find out like, oh, well, what is, you know, what does it cost to do that? Or we the add on might be I don't know if we decided this but like new windows or yeah the floor we want to replace the floor like, refinish the floor yeah replace or refinish the floor so you'll see these add ons that say it's gonna so the bare minimum is gonna be this and if we want something fancier or something more energy efficient um, this is what it's gonna cost and so when we're looking at the bond number we're going to also be mentally saying, you know what, I think we do want to consider these add-ons. We don't have to decide right then and there because the bond vote is not, it's an up to amount, right? So meanwhile, we're gonna be looking for other sources of funding like the MERP and like other grants, like that thing that we just submitted that could be, could be 100, 300,000 for ADA, right? So we won't necessarily know what we're approved for. So our bond ask may be much higher than we end up actually bonding for. And so that's a piece around education that we're going to have to have as well, because we don't know today what, and we won't know on August 20th, how much we got for Merck or how much we're going to get for our ADA. We're just not going to know. Um, so that's why it's going to be super important that people understand when they're voting that this is an up to amount. We're not borrowing that money today. We've gotten permission from the town to borrow up to that amount. But once we do borrow, we want to have a real sense of do we actually need that full amount, right? Because we don't want to have to go back and say we need more money. So we won't know on November 5th. We won't know on November 5th. No, nope. I mean, because it's just the way these grants are working. So that's why if we want to start, we want to be shovel ready in the spring of 2025, we have to know in November. Yes, Randy. Uh, just to be clear, part of the scoring criteria, I imagine uh, focused on this timeline. Yes. And and obviously this candidate committed to, to that time. Yes. Yeah, they were a little faster, were they, in yeah. terms of getting the job done? Yes, they're, 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 they anticipated being able to get the job done in six months' time, starting in the spring, after in the spring of 25. Hmm. So there's lots of there's lots of moving pieces in this, and it doesn't come at a great time. I understand that with the burdens that we have on the town, but it also comes at 
no better time because of the federal funding that's available to help with some of this. You're yeah. talking about the present tax property tax. I'm talking about the flood. Floods, floods the everything. Through the flood. Yeah, taxes, everything. Yep. Yep. Yes. I was gonna come in hot with a motion to approve EF wall as well. all right. Uh, yes. requested you by... go girl. Preservation <laughs> committee. <laughs> all right, it's our second. I'll second oh. Peter. Okay, Peter seconds. All those in favor of approving EF wall as the uh, construction manager for this design phase, please say aye. 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 Well, no, it was, oh, it's for the whole thing, but it's, we have money right now only for the design phase. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Megan, so, comment? Yeah. So uh, we requested a proposal and we asked the CMs to break out for the fees for this design phase because we knew that that piece of it was currently kind of allocated funding uh the next phase of work uh would be included in that bond amount that uh you'd put on the ballot later as would our next design phase fees um as well as the construction costs and any permitting costs so that'll be kind of bundled together and in consideration of any uh uh grant information we have at that time so we're you know there's a we'll see how much information we get um, by that point related to grants, and that will help us inform that number. But as Liz said, it's an up to number. Um, so as grants and additional funding comes in, it uh, will surely be less than that. Um, and just to put a finer point on that, this does not obligate the town to necessarily move forward with construction on the project. There will be approvals that can that happen at the next phases of design. So right now you're really just looking at approving this phase of work so we keep moving. And then um, at the bond that would approve us to go into construction documents. And then um, before the project would actually uh, go out to bid, you would have another look at that guaranteed maximum price in the contract. and. Uh, then you'd be able to uh, weigh in then. So you're in a way kind of, um, we, we have prices for all of that. So for planning purposes, but it, it doesn't require you at this point um, to do any of that. Okay, great. Thank you, Megan, for that clarification. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, Megan, for coming. And thank you, Sandy and Dave, for representing and Adrian. We did. We did. Yeah. I think we said all those in favor. I I, did, I was first, and I there was that. Okay. Yeah. Did we all? Did we say all those? We all said all those. Right. All right. Good. All right. It's a good deal. All right. Thank, thank you. All right. So thank we're. It's now seven ten. We have other business. We need to sign the MOU for flood debris removal, which refers to memorandum of understanding. No, I know, but. It refers to garbage. It doesn't refer right. to natural debris, correct? I just want to also thank these guys. I want to thank Sandy and Dave and you and everybody for so much time. I know. You've got me. And those guys for you. <laughs> I have, I've, I've been half, half there lately because I have, a, I have work related to the flood at work. Okay. This um, is just to pick up. Uh, like um, last soggy year, carpet. So I'm soggy carpets. Last, it's not to clean out trees or culverts or anything else like that. It's just if you've got flooded stuff, this is the only way to do it. So the FEMA reimbursement. And it's you. not your. It does not mean people that you can go to your garage and, and put stuff tires. out and put out your old tires. Like it they means did on the McCullough. There frankly girls. shouldn't be a lot of garbage unless you were someone whose right. basement was flooded and you had things that had to be thrown away. Thank you. Does this does this include um your piles of debris that would then probably need to be sorted uh for areas that are uh not next to somebody's home but uh is caught by a bridge or anything else? I mean there's so many piles of just general debris and, about tree and I'm talking about a mixture of uh, natural debris, tires, wagons, um, all of the stuff that washed downstream from people's sheds that have been flooded. Um, I would say I yes, it does. I see on the side of the road. If it ends the town's right away. 
that if, you, if it ends up in the town right away, or someone takes it and puts it in the town right away, and we give them direction to say, go up down Lumpkin McCullough Hill Road, go over the road, there's a guy who sits in the truck who's just a FEMA consultant. He probably comes from a private company in Florida. And he'll know what can go in the trash and what can't. Not that. Yes, that, not that. Okay. And that satisfies FEMA. Okay, great. So I don't see that contract. Did I already sign it? Yes, you did. Okay, perfect. Alrighty, so do we need to move to sign that? Yes. Okay, is there a motion to sign the MOU for flood debris removal? The you, memorandum. Uh, I, I have, I guess I have some other questions about uh, hearing what you just said. It sounds like this is FEMA related work and, and whatnot at the end of the day. Okay, for, that's. Okay. <laughs> is there a motion? I'll move. Thank you, Vic. Is there a second? Yes, ma'am. And Randy seconds. All those in favor of signing the MOU for blood yeah. debris removal. Uh, non natural. Uh, okay, say aye. Great. Aye. Uh, the ayes have it. Okay, so personnel policy scheduling action possible. Before we go too far off, I mean, I have a follow up question about. Um, do we have a plan for all of the natural debris in those piles? So the stuff that the FEMA guy says, no, don't don't take that pile. Um, do we have a plan? Has there been any consideration or conversation? Uh, Sarah, so your Jorgen told us that we're not to remove roots and stuff from the stream beds. So like that. Um, that tree that's hanging over, we could hack it in half so it doesn't fall off of, onto somebody's car, but we, they want to leave all the roots in the brook. Okay. Um, and in terms of, I, I don't, Eric, I know has a plan, something with cutting up trees, but I, I think that has to do with fixing roads. Um, yeah, this is all, this is all I, stuff, Steve, I Dennis. Think really conflicting information from the state. Like yeah. one side of the state is saying, don't touch anything in the river. And the other side of that, it's like, take it out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to wait to hear more from Stacey on that because I don't, I agree. I don't think we should be doing, advising anyone to start cutting trees out of the river. No. That statement that was in Front Porch Forum last night or the night before about uh, oh, uh, Mr. Borg from uh, Stream Alter. Darren Borg. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Darren, Darren. Thank you. And saying that, oh, we could cut them. I don't know. I don't know about. I, I have almost two conflicting emails because right. it's the same one who said leave the roots yeah. and the yeah. stump and the, don't clean out. I, don't, I, I can understand why you could cut the tree and then leave the stump because that's that's part of the stream. That's what's whole bank. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. So, um. so the message to residents that asked that question is. Stay tuned yeah. for August 6th. Yeah. Attend the meeting. Right. The other thing, too, was that Stacey uh, Pomeroy, my new best friend, from, <laughs> my new best river scientist friend, um, did say that she thinks a study was done on Brook Road about removal. The debris. And she was going to try to hunt it down. Yeah. Well, we also have this message from Liz. Oh, yeah, we're going to the oh, we're not done yet. Uh, yeah, well, we, this is just, it's talking about that we have under other business signing MOU to flood and be removal action. Likely, I spoke with the state officials at the Agency of National Resources, yeah. including yeah. River Engineer Darren Borg, and asked them the state would be removing enormous amount of log jams and down trees that are in the Great Brook right now. Darren said that the state will not be removing the tree debris, but the town and homeowners are welcome to cut up any logs in the river yeah. and remove them. Now, I spoke with Darren myself personally. Yeah, by Steve's thing, and he said, "No." So something is well, and, the, and Stacy said, "Stacy said it's a, it's a, it, it is." There are two sides. So I think didn't she say that, Randy? Didn't she say? Um, let me just find her thing because she said I asked. Um, I mean, I guess if it's just debris that's going to be going, that's that's going to be pushed down further by the water, then that makes sense. <laughs> she said, we ha we hear the question about removal of debris a lot. We do have some interesting information from a past study that looked at de looked at debris movement on Bro Great Brook. So I'll see if I can get that ready for the meeting. Uh, oh, Tim Cole from Dirtex is going to come. Nice. Uh, do you want me to confirm him? Would you confirm you him? Sure, I'll confirm. Yep. Yep. Tim Cole's coming. Yeah. Tim Cole, yeah. Is he the, the head? Oh, the head. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah, that'd be great. 
Um, we're gonna have such a great meeting. It really is. It's gonna be other communities we need to. They're gonna be jealous. 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 Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I did want to ask this question, um, Sarah, about Elizabeth O'Casey. Uh oh. Did she say that? Was this a separate email that she was interested in doing a buyout? She's going to come to the office tomorrow and stuff. So but she can't do it yet until, or she would be last year. Was she even uh, uh, eligible? The, the, the deadline, you know, just prove the application. She can send it in, and the state can do its own investigation. Yeah. But if we do it before August 16th, they'll have a pre 2023 flood. Yeah. But let me just ask this question. This is a dumb question. Is Brook Road in a flood, in a FEMA flood zone? I'm, I'm not sure. I have no idea. Now, well, certain parts of it are. Okay. The lower you go, it's in the flood zone, like down by Stevie Martin's. Yes. And then you keep going up, like Phil's is. Yeah. And when it gets up to about my property up there, it kind of goes either way. It kind of that's okay. So, but also the flood zones are changing. But sense. but yes, um, that, in and FEMA I, world, if she's not in a flood zone, she wouldn't be eligible for a buyout. That's a good point. I, will, I don't think she is. Yeah, I don't think she is either. I think she's too far up. The new guy. Um, but she's eligible to apply for so EWP or, or EWP because it's river. Right. Okay. He is. Right. He's not going to. But that's not going to happen. Fast. It's not going to solve her problem fast enough. So, um, so, yeah, I was just going to say, um, I talked with Bobby Brimblecombe today about somebody else. Bobby, Bobby. <laughs> and she said because someone had said to me that they were in a state buyout and that was called the um something like all our healthy communities resilient yeah, communities called, called flood community. yeah and that's no longer funding available just that's correct. so you know and that's fine but that but that would have been in a in another in a last year that they could have been a property that might be considered Maybe. for that. I mean that would have been but the bridge didn't wash out for this year. No, twice it worked out. I just last wanted year. to let you know that I am on the line. This is Elizabeth O'Casey. Okay. Oh, if you want to okay. talk to me directly, I have a lot of information about this. Oh I don't see who are you but the six nine I'm on the seven. phone because I don't have cells I don't have Wi Fi so I had to dial in. I don't okay. want to interrupt. I just want to let you know that I am here. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Um, so, yeah, so what we were just saying, Elizabeth, is that uh, we don't know if you're in the floodplain. Do you know if you're in a floodplain? Like, are you required to have flood insurance? Right. So, up, no, Upper Brook Road is not in the floodplain. I don't know about lower. We are in the river corridor. The corner of our house is in the river corridor. And we had a person from Vermont Emergency Management come out and confirm that. And we are eligible for a Vermont Emergency Management or the state hazard mitigation program. So the buyouts from the state. That's a buyout. We are not eligible for a FEMA buyout because we are not in a floodplain. But that makes us more competitive in the VEM grants because we cannot qualify for a floodplain buyout. And just for catch everyone up to speed here, I just talked with the state um, VTRANS lead for bridge reconstruction. It will cost $250,000 for us to repair our bridge in a way that it will not wash out every year. So I have nowhere near that amount of money. So that's why we're exploring the state buyout program. And I can go into that in more detail, but uh, we do qualify for that. I'm a little confused because all of our FEMA program, all our FEMA buyouts are managed through the state. So they all come through with Vermont Emergency Management. We'll talk about it tomorrow if you come to the office. And I will meanwhile contact my many contacts in Vermont Emergency Management and see which form I should be using, but I assume it's the same one. So the way that I hear it is that there's this other pot of money that the state might consider do buyouts through the hazard mitigation project that you're working on. Right. I thought that was a FEMA buyout that the state is managing. Uh, it's very confusing because all the FEMA buyouts come through the state. That's what I mean, right. That's why I, I assumed that was a FEMA and yeah. not some right. other pot of money because that resilient community thing isn't available anymore. No. No. So, okay. 
then that that would be really interesting to know if that is well i just want to get pogged on it so that if they, okay. in case it's a pre august 16th then we can get that okay um yeah so and l that emergency watershed you i don't know if you were on the meeting when they were here yes i was you Thanks. were okay yeah so yeah. you heard that that's like a longer term thing um yeah happen. but there is a possibility of it potentially happening this year as well i mean i can't access my house <laughs> right now i'm going through winter N nobody can get to my home if we have know. God forbid an emergency are... so Hey, El, hey El, can I ask you a question to you? Um, who was, I, I saw Dirt Tech there today and I saw some beams out. Did Dirt Tech pull out some I beams today from the river for you guys? What? Yes, we hired them to pull out the 50 foot steel I beams to see if they were still salvageable and get them out of the brook in case we have another storm that would potentially further damage them. It's interesting. Yeah, okay. Did you so have a comment? Just that Keith Coven is the one who had originally sent out the hazard mitigation funding grant. So um, it's a sort of central Vermont regional clinic, which Vermont uh, okay. okay. I would like to know. I think my question is maybe I'm just maybe I'm misunderstanding. I know that she's requesting potentially a buyout of some other funding that's available. That sounds like it's through this hazard mitigation that we're already putting 15 applications in for other things. 38. 38 applications for other okay. things. And this would be yet another application. I will try to clarify. Okay, that'd be great. All right. Um, Elle, did you have any other questions or comments that you'd like to share while we have you? Yeah, I think just around the load of debris within Great Brook sounds like we'll be looking at the plan that was previously potentially done around that. Yeah. But when I have counted, there are over a hundred tr downed trees in the brook. Okay. Um, a major log jam was the cause of our yeah. bridge washout. We had we hired Blow and Cody last year to reinforce the abutments on both sides. They're very reputable firm. We in invested thirty-eight thousand dollars in that, and at the end of the day, it was a log jam that caused the brook to go completely around the backside of one of the abutments and did the majority of the damage. And so I'm very concerned around just the debris load within the Great Brook and all of the trees that have yet to fall but are about to, based on the root structure they have that barely hangs on to the clay. So that's my only other comment. Okay. Are you going to be able to attend on August 6th at 6 o'clock at Rumney where we're going to have some experts available to answer questions? Because I, that is a question that I, I did pose to Stacy today. And it sounds like there's just sort of mixed, mixed feelings on removing things from rivers. And, um, and so if, if you can come to that meeting, I think that would be great. Yeah, I used to work with Stacey and Mike Klein and the DEC oh, folks right. and Jaron Borg. And so I talked with Jaron Borg when he came out to our property three different times yeah. in the last two weeks. And he said that it is perfectly fine for homeowners to remove the debris on their property in the brook, cut it up and make so that it would actually flow down river rather than creating these massive jams that could potentially wash out people's homes, our bridge again, et cetera. So I understand Stacy's take on it. I've talked with Jaron. I know Mike's take on it. And it's just, it's trying to balance the reality that there are a number of homes on Great Brook that barely survived this time. And who knows what would happen again with more log jams with also the importance of habitat and the health of the brook. Yeah, yeah I, I know this topic came up uh, quite a few different times at the end of the 23 flood uh, here in this forum. Um, and I, I think we absolutely get conflicting information from what it sounds like Jaron has, has talked with you about. Um, so I, I think getting clarity on uh, what people can and can't do is extremely important. So uh, hopefully we can come away with that on the 6th. And just for your reference, you know, this is, as you know, <laughs> these last two storms are rather unprecedented and it has never been like the town's, like, we've never considered going into rivers and 
and removing debris as a part of what a road crew does. And at this point in time, this appears to me really something that, you know, if the town moves forward with this, this is going to be an extremely costly. We'd have to hire. I mean, and something we'd have to hire out and probably, you know, get voter approval on because I can't imagine that it's cheap to do this. Um, and so, um, you know, I, I totally, I feel for you and all the people on Brook Road, because it's not just you, you're very correct. It is almost every house had some impact that is just going to get worse as these storms continue. Um, and and it's, it's in our best interest as well to keep homeowners in Middlesex on Brook Road. So, um, you know, there's just a lot to process here and get information on. So I'm sorry, Elle, that this has happened to you. You're one of the worst hit people on the on the road, um, and you know I wish it weren't that way. No, I and, and I just want to also mention thank you for that. But um, with the public assistance, debris removal is part of that through FEMA, and so they have a policy where hazardous trees, limbs, branches, stumps, vegetative debris, etc., sand, mud, silt, gravel, all qualify for that de debris removal. So I just want us to be thinking about that as we're thinking about fixing the roads. The reason, at least on Brook Road, that the roads continue to have this issue is because the brook is dumping the banks, causing log jams, backing up water 25 feet high in that. So I think it's an important component to think holistically about, and it does qualify for public assistance money. So Through thank the, you for uh, listening, and I know we can continue to talk about it on August 6th. Oh, is this the hazard grant? The hazard. No, this is the debris. This is, this is the public... This is public assistance category A for FEMA. It's debris removal, including private property debris. So when we're, if we get the disaster declaration for public assistance, it's not just okay. road repair. It's, it includes debris removal, and it's a very broad category of what qualifies for debris removal. But Sarah, this is different from flooded. Yeah, to pick up flooded. This is just to pick up flooded carpet, right? So that's something different. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, and that, L, when you saw that debris email from Sarah, that was, to, or front porch form post, that was just for like, if your carpets got flooded and you had to pull them out. That's the debris we're talking about. But you're saying that if we get a public assistance declaration through FEMA, through FEMA that this Category. is this could be something that we hire someone to remove trees. That would be amazing. Yeah. And have you have you anybody have any of you people looked at that the Great Brook? Yeah. Oh God, yes. I it looks like a war zone. Like yeah, up, it does. I mean, I own like a half half a mile on it, and it's just amazing the amount yes. of trees that came it's down. It's amazing. And I'm what and how you go up above looks. you go up above where Al lives. That that channel, uh, I just cannot believe how deep it's gone. Uh, down and how many of those trees and of course the whole sides of those banks is nothing but clay and it's all sliding yes. in. So I would say twenty five million dollars wouldn't I would take think care that's of it about twenty five million wouldn't take care of it all. No. no. It's not correct. Not correct. Oh my God. Okay. Well thank you for coming. I'm really sorry that you're dealing with this tragedy. Mark, Thanks that's for that's talking great. about it. I'm happy to help the town navigate as we get in that direction. So I appreciate you okay. listening. Yep, thank you. I would just, Liz, I would just remind everybody, I remember very well having this discussion of the flood 10 years ago. And we were very concerned about the debris in the Great Brook. And we were at that time categorically told that we could not do anything. And I don't think Mike Klein was involved in that at that time. But Anyway, we were told there was no removal of debris and that the river needed to take its natural course, et cetera, et cetera. So we absolutely. Maybe it's changed. Okay. Yep. Um, all right. So are there any matters that have come before the board? Any other public comments? Yep. We need to know if you want to go for a $1.5 million. Oh, right. Email. Three million. Three million. Three million. Three million. Okay. Is there a motion to go, uh, go with three million? Yeah, okay, three million. Million. All righty. <laughs> In fact, I might say five million. Make it twenty-five million. Might need it. All right. <laughs>
Okay, um, any other correspondence or anything that anybody had? I, it looks like we passed over the personnel policy schedule. <laughs> I got to go. I got to Okay, yeah. great. We, All right. We're not taking on the personnel policy tonight? Yeah, we're going to two more hours. You ready for it? Yeah, I can't even prepare for that. <laughs> Very simple. All righty. So it is seven thirty, um, and we are adjourning this meeting one hour after the regularly scheduled adjournment. And thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Get over Yes. You get five dollars. <laughs> thank you, Orca.